Now on agriculture front, uh, yes sir. What are our priorities? Uh, sir, our priorities on the agriculture front uh, is to firstly make agriculture a profitable enterprise for the farmers, uh, double try and double their incomes. Uh, also, uh, like a lot of people are around 44 crore people still derive their livelihood from agriculture. So we need to uh, like there is uh, a lot of disguised unemployment. What you will suggest to the government? Ke how to collect data for labour market information? Yes, sir. It's a big challenge, you know. Yes, sir. A very big. Challenge. What will be your suggestion? Yes, sir. Whether it will be voluntarily or whether it should be, you know, under tax and regulations. Uh, so the current model, uh, as followed uh, in Ishram, there are 28 uh, crore uh, unorganized workers register on that is voluntary registration. But to improve the uh, efficiency and uh, increase the data quality, what we can do is uh, ask the employers that where these are uh, unorganized people are employed, that they can somehow if. Uh, If a maid is employed in someone's house, if a cook is employed, that person, along with police verification, if they can put difference between balance of payment and balance of pay. Balance of payment is a larger uh, umbrella term. Within it, the capital account can be called balance of trade, which is the import-export uh, expenditure. While balance of payment, along with balance of trade, also has capital account. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Come here. Please take your seat. Thank you, sir. The Vanchu, you are from Delhi. Yes, sir. Your father was in Alsan Government Service. Yes, sir. What he was before retirement? Ah, uh, sir, Deputy Director, CEA, Central Electricity Authority. Central Electricity Authority. Yes, sir. Okay. When this authority was created? um so uh, it was created uh, exact year i am not sure it okay. was created in 1960s yeah. but in 2003 by the electricity act it was given the statutory status okay and what are its functions uh so its functions are uh, laying down standards for the electricity sector grid management data collection and analysis uh, of that data okay now you have opted for ut Cadre as a first person. Ah uh, yes, sir. What uh, inspires you uh, to serve in UT? Because it is a very fluid cadre. Yes, sir. Recently, uh, Neva was also included. Yes, sir. It makes it more challenging. Yes, sir. Uh, so I think it is a very diverse uh, cadre yes. because uh, we can get two servant states like Arunachal. Oh. Uh, and uh, even in uh, mizoram mm. and also uh, like in goa and uh, many of the union territories mm. of the country whereas with respect to other cadres we are confined only to the geographical boundaries of that uh, state but do you, don't you think that sometimes languages also creates a problem uh, yes uh, language barrier uh, is an issue but uh, civil language service, barrier local laws uh, yes, local sir. rules yes sir uh, so but in union territories Um, much of the administrative laws are similar in nature, and uh, language can always be uh, learnt uh, while on the field. Mm. Rules and acts are also quite different. North East is totally different. Ah uh, yes, sir. Than your other states. Okay, now on agriculture front. Ah uh, yes, sir. What are our priorities? Uh, sir our priorities on the agriculture front uh, is to firstly make agriculture a profitable enterprise for the farmers uh, double try and double their incomes uh, also uh, like a lot of people are around 44 crore people still derive their livelihood from agriculture mm -hmm. so we need to uh, like there is uh, a lot of disguised unemployment we need to push those people skill those people into manufacturing so and what is our strategy service sector uh, so for uh, manufacturing we have the make in india program Uh, for which we are trying to uh, upskill, uh, like uh, ma make in India and uh, make manufacturing more attractive. Specifically for the agriculture sector, I am asking. Uh, for A strategy for the agriculture sector. Uh, so, uh, uh, in which uh, uh, domain for double, uh, like farmers' income or doubling the farmer income? Yes, sir. or to achieve a higher growth rate in the agriculture? Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, so we have schemes like uh, the. Uh, for credit we have the kisan credit card scheme uh, in the recent budget we have the agriculture accelerator fund mm -hmm. uh, to fund uh, agri startups uh, apart from that sir in agriculture we have schemes like pm kisan 
6000 uh, per month which can be added now from the kisan credit uh, scheme or the earlier micro financing we are again now giving more emphasis on the primary credit societies yes sir psc so why we lost interest in the primary credit societies in between and then again uh, yes sir reinventing the all lost thing yes sir uh, so in between uh, the psc uh, there were many uh, inefficiencies in their functioning but in the recent budget uh, the finance minister has said that they will be digitized the psc records mm. so uh, the uh, uh, functioning of them can smoothen and they can deliver credit whether uh, there is a proposal to bring them under effective monitoring of the rbi also uh, uh, sir uh, i am not uh, exactly aware of that but yes uh, uh, they are under the uh, purview of cooperative ministries uh, looking at uh, psc Uh, like they are under the scheme of uh, sahkar se uh, samriddhi okay now uh, what we read there in the newspaper is that there is emphasis on the decentralized uh, storage capacity how do you rate this decentralized storage capacity vis-a-vis the earlier centralized storage capacity because both have their own functions now mm-hmm. do you think that the government in their budget they have reduced their budget on the minimum support price sure uh whether it is a very bold step by the government in view of the farmers whole agitation centering up around the minimum support price yes sir Clubbed with that, the government has also announced that one year free ration distribution to the 80 crore people. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, so how you will reconcile? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, regarding MSP, uh, MSP is just uh, an indicative price uh, for the market. So, uh, government is uh, like if there are no uh, available uh, purchasers in the market, then the government uh, is there for the rescue mm-hmm. of the farmer. Mm-hmm. So, it is better to rationalize it and. push uh, the farmers to sell it in the uh, open market rather than sell it to the government mm. and sir regarding uh, free uh, ration supplies uh, uh, in covid we had the pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana mm. now uh, that has been discontinued but the nfsa ration uh, mm. ration mm. Uh, has been made free mm. uh, so sir uh, it is uh, i think a prudent decision because we already have a lot of surplus stock in our uh, food basket like our uh, storage houses are having a lot of uh, excess wheat and rice so instead of charging the 1 2 and 3 rupee formula that is there in the nfsa act we can uh, give it out to the poor for free whether the reducing of our budget on the msp will not affect our free distribution uh no sir i i do not think so because uh, as uh, like the rice wheat and uh, coarse grains are concerned which are uh, distributed under nfsa we have uh, adequate uh, uh, purchasers for them in the market whether be it in the export market uh, internationally because of the russia ukraine war we have supplied a lot of wheat outside also uh, and the domestic demand is also high so government does not need to have that uh, msp uh, safeguard okay now the narega also we have reduced our budget yes sir what are the reasons they have mentioned or they have thought of uh, yes sir so the first reason that uh, the finance minister has said that additional allocation has been made to schemes like jal jeevan mission and pradhan mantri aavas yojana which will in itself uh, create a lot of job opportunities and asset cre- uh, asset creation which happens uh, uh, as in mandrega so uh, that component uh, can be looked at as an indirect way of uh, Uh, getting uh, jobs of mandrega also recently the finance minister said that if there are needs and uh, she will allot more funds to mandrega if uh, there is a need okay now coming back to my first question about the agriculture doubling the farmer incomes yes sir what are the government initiatives on post harvest management post harvest management yes sir Uh, so post harvest management firstly we have uh, under the pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana insurance if there is any post harvest loss to the farmer uh, 
firstly so secondly uh, there are schemes with respect to the central warehousing cooperation cwc uh, where uh, the uh, after post harvest the trade receipt can be deposited and loans can be taken on that uh, if we consider post harvest then kisan rail and kisan uh, or krishi uran are to for perishable commodities uh, after they are harvested they can be easily transported to uh, the uh, end consumer um, uh, yes sir so these are all i can what do what okay. do you have to say about the food processing industries Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so, food processing also uh, is an important aspect. For example, in the one district one product scheme, uh, certain um, items are asked to be processed and then sold, so that that increases the value price of them and uh, in turn increases the farmers' income. And what is the role of the cold chain in that? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so, cold storage infrastructure. Uh, there is a scheme called Pradhan Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana. Uh, which aims to build coal storage infrastructure in absence of coal storage infrastructure most of the agricultural commodities will uh, like they will perish or they will not survive for longer periods of time so what does uh, constitute a gold a cold chain uh, cold chain uh, sir uh, as per my uh, limited knowledge i think uh, uh, end to end uh, like from cold containers that can transport the product from farm gate uh, to cold store houses where there is refrigeration and air conditioning where it can be stored and then again uh, to uh, a connecting link of transport to the market okay now now we are talking about last mileage connectivity uh, yes sir and then the first mileage connectivity how you will explain first mileage connectivity last mileage connectivity ah uh, yes sir uh, sir as uh, per my uh, limited knowledge first mileage connectivity is that uh, where government has not ventured till now the areas that are uh, basically uh, not explored so first mile uh, could possibly hint to that that we need to do more in these areas last mile connectivity is including the very last person the poorest of the poor from the remotest village if we are able to uh, connect them with our schemes then that uh, constitutes for last mile connectivity okay thank you sir divyansh yes sir it graduate yes sir shift to anthropology uh, or ies yes sir why ies uh, so why ies what are uh, preferences is your ies yes sir uh, why ies yes sir uh, sir i am looking for a career which is challenging interesting and uh, which can give me an opportunity to make decisions uh, using that decision making i want to bring about social change social change in india employment growth is a big challenge yes sir what are these challenges uh, sir in india it is said that india is a country with jobless growth we do not have enough jobs Uh, so uh, there are initiatives uh, by the government for skilling people uh, like the koshal uh, koshal vikas yojana and uh, uh, unemployment uh, also hampers us because like uh, as so we discussed that in agriculture sector there is over reliance on agriculture as a mode of employment uh, so yes sir so you can consider manufacturing sector has more opportunity Uh, yes sir uh, semi skilled people and low skilled people can easily enter the manufacturing sector who are so, uh, semi skilled person or who are semi uh, skilled person uh, sir semi semi skilled people can be like uh, cooks drivers who know uh, some uh, sort of uh, and who are skilled person and highly skilled or skilled uh, skilled uh, so skilled people are those who have a certain degree or who have a certain graduation certificate and uh, basically uh, they can do their job one of the challenges is considered for employment growth is absence of an adequate lmi labor market information yes, do you sir. agree with this so uh, labor uh, labor market reform information information uh, yes sir uh, because there is information asymmetry and uh, like if an employer wants to recruit someone he might not find uh, that person in his nearby vicinity but he may find it in the other state so that con- information connectivity is not there that that person is unemployed in the other state i could call him uh, that 
job exchanges can be made. So suppose you are IAS officer, what what is what will be your suggestion to government? Uh, sir, my suggestion would be to make an uh, online portal. We have done uh, something like eShram, but it is still the employee employer matching uh, component is missing. The government See, is publishing of LMI is there is a function, there is a provision, yes, but sir. that is only for the organized sector that to own a sample basis. Yes, sir. But for the organized or unorganized sector, LMI information is a big issue. Yes, sir. A big challenge. What you will suggest to the government ke how to collect data for labor market information? Yes, sir. It's a big challenge, you know. Yes, sir. A very big challenge. What will be your suggestion? Yes, sir. Whether it will be voluntarily or whether it should be, you know, under checks and regulations. Yes, sir. Uh, so the current model, uh, as followed uh, in Ishram, there are 28 uh, crore uh, unorganized workers registered on that is voluntary registration. But to improve the uh, efficiency and uh, increase the data quality, what we can do is uh, ask the employers that where these are uh, unorganized people are employed, that they can somehow, if uh, if a maid is employed in someone's house, if a cook is employed, that person along with police verification, if they can put. Uh, uh, why okay. employer is not giving labor market information voluntarily? Um, sir, I think uh, uh, because uh, at many stages labor, uh, if the lab cost of labor might go up with that, uh, they are uh, the employers are uh, giving less wages to them. So they are having this fear. <laughs> yes, sir. That giving correct data. Yes, sir. Okay, India is a young nation. That technology is being used for last, I think, 10 years, more than 10 years. Yes, sir. What is this technology, young nation? Young nation, yes, sir. So, if we look at the National Youth Policy of 2014, it describes youth as someone who is in between the ages of 15 to 29. But world over, uh, people who are less than 35 also are considered young. So, uh, India has around 65% population in that uh, age bracket. Do you remember some of these schemes that uh, or the initiative or the programs that the government has taken in the recent past? Uh, for the youth? Uh, uh, so there are... Uh, to empower them job? Uh, to give them jobs. Uh, so the NRLM, National Rural Livelihood Mission, NULM, uh, National Urban Livelihood Mission. Uh, apart from that, for job creation... Uh, mm, so I am not uh, able to recall any. You said PMKBY skilling in India, making India. Yes, sir. Uh, skilling India, yes, sir. Refreshing sector, you yes, know said. Yes, sir. Skilling schemes are there. Okay. Last question. Demographic dividend, what it is? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, it basically refers to the, uh, this only, that we have a very young demography and to reap the dividends, to reap the profits out of them, this working age population, our dependency ratio is low. Like uh, the old age and the children who are dependent on this working age population is low. And if this uh, working age population for the next 25 to 30 years can uh, uh, increasingly participate in the labor market, we would uh, achieve our target of a developed economy by 2047. Can you uh, suggest or uh, do you know what are the fast emerging uh, sectors or the trades where job opportunities are more in India? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so I think. Uh, as I come from a IT services background, so information technology but is where living. Uh, yes, sir, but uh, information <laughs> technology is always a part of administration. Everything uh, today has a technological interface, and people who are well versed with technology will be able to. This is what, some more? Uh, yes, sir. Apart from that, sir, uh, manufacturing sector, sir, as I said, we need to uh, uplift more. Um, apart from that, sir, uh, Anything that has to uh, do with the uh, emerging technologies like semiconductor manufacturing. But that will, uh, that yeah, will uh, reduce employment, not increase employment. Uh, uh, for uh, AI, artificial intelligence. Right. Yeah, these uh, services. How, to, how about to retail and hospitality? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, retail hospitality is there. Textile. Uh, textile. textile is a very big employer, yes, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, have you gone through the budget? Uh, yes, sir. What is the main theme of budget, or simply Amrit Khan's? Uh, so, main theme I think is uh, outlined by the seven priorities of the government, the Saptarishi priorities. They are the means, I am talking about the end. End. Uh, sir, as far uh, as I can recall, I think uh, developed economy by uh, 2047. 
Okay, recently uh, government of India last year, I hope, it, it, it came out with the concept of bad banking. Yes, sir. What is that bad banking? Uh, sir, bad banks are someone who can take NPAs, non-performing assets, from public sector banks and private banks. They can purchase them and on their behalf resolve them so that the balance sheets of those banks become cleaner. Can you name them? Uh, the bad bank? Yes. Technical name? Uh, sir, NAB, uh, as National Asset Reconstruction. You mean to say NARC? NARC. The second one is? Uh, Indian Debt Resolution. So what is the difference between these two? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, one will purchase and the other will resolve. Okay, this concept of ARC is a very old. Yes, sir. It was suggested by Hoki Nasiman sir. There are 28 ARCs, but why they have failed? What went wrong with the old ARC? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, as uh, per my limited knowledge, they were not able to deconstruct uh, the assets. Sometimes what happened was like they were directly going for selling and it was not fetching like the assets. If a, a loan is defaulted, they were directly going for liquidation of the assets, which did not result in adequate return. So one was that issue. And second, there were a lot of compliances um, uh, that had to be followed, uh, which resulted in delays and uh, diminishing value of those assets. Okay. After the Ukraine war, America imposed uh, economic sanctions on Russia. Yes, sir. What, is, what are these sanctions basically? Can you give any example of that? Uh, sir, I only know of the oil price cap that G7 countries have put, $60 per barrel. Have you heard this name, SWIFT? Yes, sir, SWIFT, yes, what sir. Is that? Uh, sir, SWIFT is a, uh, basically a banking channel for cross-border payments. So, uh, uh, the Western countries, like it is headquartered in Belgium, so SWIFT, uh, so the, with the Western countries uh, to limit Russia, to keep a check on Russia, have excluded them from this system. I don't think it's very interesting. Ki they have banned Russia from that channel and they are trading with Russia because they are depending heavily on the oil and gas of Russia. Yes, sir. So, did, are they hurting themselves under the pressure of USA? Um, so, uh, it is, uh, I think, uh, difficult to say that they are hurting themselves because they have found alternative ways uh, to pay the Russians uh, the money uh, without uh, bypassing the I swift They channel. have to buy all. They have mm. to buy the gas. Yes, sir. And Russia is not going to accept dollar. Because yes, sir. Because China is closed. Yes, sir. So, then what are the options left with the Western world? They cannot stop importing crude yes, oil sir. and gas. Yes, sir. What are the options left for them? Uh, so, uh, I think they are uh, not paying it in dollars. They are paying it in that ruble. Well, they are not earning any ruble. Uh, ruble is not the hard currency. It is not with the developed countries. Yes, sir. Yeah. From where they will get the ruble? Uh, so, exactly, I am not sure, but I think. Uh, Currency exchange uh, may work. Okay. Currency. Uh, regarding banking, recently repo rate was increased by the RBI many times. Yes, what sir. was the main reason behind that? Uh, so the repo rate was increased because uh, the inflation limit had gone beyond six percent. So. Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Take it as measured by. CPI. CPI. C consumer. What is the difference between CPI and WPI, and which one is basically called headline inflation in India? So, CPI minus the food and uh, fuel inflation is the headline inflation. Uh, uh, headline? Headline means the main, in, main inflation. Yes, CPI yes, versus WPI. So what is the main difference between these two? Yes, sir. Uh, CPI uh, is from an individual perspective, uh, the retail perspective, and WPI is from the wholesale perspective, wholesale price index. But over retail prices, government depend has no control? Uh, yes, sir. The retailers, they are selling. At the same time, in different market, at different prices, in the same market, at different point of time, they are charging different prices. And at the same time, in the same market, from different customers, they are charging different prices. So, whether it is retail prices, government has no uh, influence. Then why move from wholesale price to retail price? Uh, so, uh, as per my uh, limited uh, understanding, retail price is the one which uh, pinches the consumer the most. Which one is better, in your opinion? as a measure of inflation and why, the main point. Uh, sir, I think the CPI basket is more robust. They have like a common everyday use like fuel, food. But number of items, they are more in WPI. Uh, uh, yes, sir. So, I am not uh, exactly sure. I think CPI is a better measure. Okay. okay. So, in the global world, which one is used more frequently, CPI or WPI? We have moved from WPI to CPI, that's fine. Yes, sir. But globally, which one is more popular? 
सर सॉरी आई एम नॉट व्हाट इज इन्फ्लेशन टारगेटिंग सो इन्फ्लेशन टारगेटिंग इज द रिजीम ऑफ हाउ टू सेट मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी ऑफ आरबीआई सो द 2 टू 6% परसेंट बैंड इज प्रोबेबली कॉल्ड से ऑनर विज फोर परसेंट इनफ्लेशन Uh, productive uh, economic activity in the so what is the relations between growth and uh, growth and inflation is a direct or inverse uh, sir till one point it is direct then it becomes inverse and the rate is 4% so rate i am uh, exactly okay. not sure difference between balance of payment and balance of trade yes sir uh, so uh, balance of payment is a larger uh, umbrella term within it the capital account can be called balance of trade which is the import export uh, expenditure while balance of payment along with balance of trade also has the uh, capital account okay suppose given foreigner came to india and during his or her stay here he is spending on indian goods and services so do you think it should be called exports of india he is spending on indian goods and services foreigners coming to uh, western india and during their stay they are spending on indian goods and services they are consuming inside india yes sir and then they are leaving yes, so can it be called exports uh, uh sir in my uh, limited understanding if the payment is in uh, rupee within it, india they cannot spend in dollar uh, yes sir they have to spend in rupee yes sir so that uh, would probably come out, uh, be counted in internal consumption private consumption it won't be included export uh, so it can be also because like that person has converted dollar to rupee to spend here so sir exactly i'm not uh, sure do you think information technology i mean to say service sector yes sir they have created more problems for the youth regarding job so problems yes um so i think uh, more than problems uh, a lot of opportunities have been opened up by the service sector yes you are talking about opportunity i'm talking about loss loss of opportunity that is bigger than creating opportunity uh sir uh, loss of uh, opportunity in terms of automation why india is facing the problem of jobless growth what is the main reason behind that uh sir because we do not have enough jobs uh, for the semi skilled individuals don't you think it's a presence of service sector um sir i think service sector has uh, improved our gdp around uh, i'm not concerned with gdp i'm talking about employment employment so i i think it has only uh, created more employment it has uh, not uh, yes sir okay your interview part is over yes.